of this video is to show you how to go from like the PGRAM Dunn's Gravo Touch software um, into um, doing something in Adobe. So I would type it in or scan it in to the first screen. Um, the customer likes this layout, which is like the first layout. Kind of remember that in the text part here. Um, so the customer you know, doesn't like the size of the font. They don't like the fonts. Um, they like a little bit about this. They like the way it's kind of laid out, but they want to change some things, whether it's um, like I said, a different font that's not there, or they want a different logo up top um, that's not in the program done library, or they want to add something to the bottom. Um, if they want to make that you know paragraph larger, if they want to make it smaller, um, that's the most common thing. Is I want to resize this, and you just can't do it in touch. So, oh, I'll show you how to do it in Adobe. So I open up Adobe. Um, Tim supplies me all of the files in EPS format, so I'm just basically going to the folder there um, to pull out, you know, where they're where they're at. So I have them all saved in these files. When I go to find one, I would just you know you can scroll if you want, but obviously it's easier to go to the search bar up here on the right. Um, type in the the Z code. Um, type that in. A lot of them are similar, like there there's like a blue cross or a pink cross. They typically only do one of them, so. You don't have to always type in all the numbers, but you can see I'm open A. So A means um, it's probably similar to the one on the very far left, like I was saying previously. Um, it's not always the case, but you know, it was A, B, C, D, and it, it's easier to find because as you open them up, you can't see what they are in Adobe until you kind of go to this step here. So it kind of cuts some time down. The next process is to put everything up in the top left corner because that's how your laser bed set up. So you just move everything up to the top left. Um, just to get it kind of where it needs to be so you can kind of visualize what you're going to start working with. And as you can see, when Tim sends me the EPS files, um, they're all blacked out. So I remove the fill, and then I'll also add a stroke to everything so it just doesn't disappear on you. All right, now if there's anything in this, if there's a fancier layout you want to keep, like you would select it, like I'm going to select the hat here. Um, and then when you select the hat, like there's this button. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but you'll see it in your options down here. There's four different ones. It's the one on the far right. Click that, and then you're going to refill it um, as you've merged it or joined it, whatever the term is. I think it's one of this. Um, and then, or if you wanted to do it to the paragraph, you can do the same thing if you wanted to keep that exactly the way it was. Um, but now, you know, now you can kind of add things in. Like everything you have here has a create outline on it, so you cannot. Um, like edit the font is no longer a font. Like whenever we get the files from him, like the fonts don't transfer over. You have to, to retype things or you just have to keep it the way it is. Um, but now I'm creating a new text box just to change the font because I don't like the way the font looks or the customer doesn't, whatever. Um, and then you, this way you can make it bigger. You can change it. You can do all kinds of stuff. I'll, I'll get rid of the original. Now I'll just type in Maria here just to kind of show you how I move things around. It's still laid out. And then I'll show you how to get the rulers back up so I can kind of line everything up and make sure everything's still centered. Let's see how it's centered there. Um, and then I'll move Maria around and I'll also you know, find the font that I like. And that way you can put it whatever size you want. You're still looking at the, the layout of what it's going to look like um, once it's engraved so the customer can get an idea. I've seen a lot of proofs this way. Um, and that's kind of the basics on that. And like I said, now you can um, go to your clip art if you have clip art saved, or you can go to the internet, find some clip art, or if you have stored, you know, that's, I'll show that in another video. Um, but then also, like, you can grab that whole thing at the bottom and make it larger, make it smaller, um, just to whatever the customer wants. That way, there's way more options to, to choose from here. And then now I'm getting rid of stuff that, you know, I just don't need this part here. Um, and this part down here at the bottom, it's nice to keep that information about the power settings, but I'm going to move it off the artboard, kind of hide the layers that I don't need, because you're only going to print, you know, the hat, Maria, and then the verse. Um, so you don't want to need all that. So I'm moving it to a different layer, so when I go to print it, um, it's, it's out of the way. And if anything's off the artboard, like the printer doesn't even read it, doesn't register, so um, if it's in the gray area, you don't have to worry about accidentally printing that, because it's completely out of the way. Um, but now, you know, I'm adding that that the template just so I have a visual representation of what it's going to look like. Um, then I would go to print, um, change it to the printer. I don't know why it always does it with the, L, the postscript thing, but change it back to L Solutions. 
and then you have your this is how far your tray is going to drop down so you can manually focus it and use your blue tube or you can just use the autofocus so this is going to drop the tray um, and this in here is where your autofocus you're turning it on or off like i said if you're going to manually focus you want this off but you know since i know it's a flat item um, i'm just going to turn it on because it's what uh, the way i like to do it um, then you also have your power settings um, my laser about five years old now so it used to be 150 was the power and the speed now it's um, I definitely get you know through the paint through some of the stuff so I always stay at 40 um, your DPI is going to be 600 um, showing just like your laser bed of the size and everything um, so that's kind of the basics and this also shows you can go if you want to go back and forth starting from the bottom up or you know, top down so um, this is I don't have a dust collector anymore so this is just off but if you have a dust collector this is the button you click now and then that's basically it and then you go and hit OK and then you're going to hit print and then hit uh, print again and then it's going to go straight to the laser I'm not actually doing this one I'm just showing you as an example um, so I'm just going to hit done and that's and now when I go to save this file this file will just you know, save as um, I'll get rid of like the bottom uh, the last part of it um, and then I'll, I'll save it as you know graduation I'll save it as cross I'll save it as different things so that way I can just go in and search later on of what file I want to you know if I'm looking if someone's looking for graduation stuff it'll pull up all my graduation stuff and I'll put the person's name on there so um, I know later on like if they want another one of those I already have it on file um, or if I have a sample on the wall I know I know what to look for in the computer because I have a lot of information saved. That's it.